everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got an FN 509 on the table. This is a civilian adaptation of FN submission for the United States Military MHS, Modular Handgun System. So it's based on the FNS originally. I've got a compact here. This is an FNS 9C, which of course is unloaded. So this is smaller because it is the compact. But this is the gun that it was you know, loosely based upon. They took this basic gun, its design, and then enhanced it to meet the various military specs. When they weren't awarded the contract, then they made whatever tweaks they wanted to make to offer it as a civilian handgun. It retains a lot of the features like the ambidextrous you know, slide release and uh, magazine catch and the removable back straps. I'm going to do a full compare at some point in time on you know, the two guns and what's different between the two of them. But for today, we'll focus on the 509 itself. Now this is a full-size 509. It's really in the Glock 19 size category. And it's got quite a few really nice features. So let me pick it up, show you that it's unloaded, and go ahead and show you some details about it. So, let's take, first we'll start with that it is unloaded. One nice thing about it, it has a bright orange following, so it's real easy to see that if you're on your last round, but it is unloaded. This gun is, it's a full-size gun. It's got stippling on the sides, which is kind of little squared, uh, like kind of squared off uh, pyramids. It's got line across the front strap and the back strap. These back straps are interchangeable. This particular gun came with two of them, the one that was on it and another one. According to FN site, there's a, a three total that you could get and it'll vary from gun to gun which ones they include. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't include the third one which actually has like an extended beaver tail but this one did only come with the two. And as I mentioned a few seconds ago it's got ambidextrous mag release and slide stop release both sides. It does have stippling up here for where your thumb goes so that you're you know, going to get very good positioning and when you do have this gun in your hand you get a very good solid grip on it. It feels very comfortable in the hand. The stippling is aggressive enough that it doesn't move around but it's not so aggressive that it you know, bites into your hand or braids you in any way. It does have serrations at the front and rear. Makes it press check easy or cycling it easy. The slide's a little heavier on this one than many others but with the serrations it's real easy to get a good grip on it and cycle it. The sights are a three dot luminescent sight arrangement. It is available with night sights, but the factory sights are the three dot luminescent. They are dovetailed at the, at the front and rear so that you can swap them out if you want to. Now in my mind the luminescent sights really aren't of a whole lot of value. You know, in the middle of a night bad guy breaks into the house, he's not going to wait while you whip out a flashlight and charge up your sights. The night sights, you know, true night sights are very useful. Luminescent are just kind of, okay, that's cool, but, you know, in all reality, you know, I wouldn't rely on them if you're expecting to have to use it in darkened conditions. From a safety perspective, the gun actually has multiple safeties. This particular version doesn't have the thumb safety, but there is a model available with the thumb safety. It also have, has a drop safety, which prevents the sear from disconnecting unless the trigger is actually pulled. It has the hinged trigger, which is similar to the M and P, which is another part of the drop safety. It prevents the trigger from moving unless you actually have your finger on it. It has a striker block, which physically inhibits the striker even if the other safeties fail. So overall, it, it is actually a very safe gun, and it's got one unique safety on it. It has auto battery protection. So if the slide is back a little bit, if the slide were to be back a little bit and the gun were out of battery, you would not be able to break the sear. The trigger goes dead. It actually has to be all the way in battery for the sear to break. That's a little unique. Most, other, most of the guns that I've seen don't have that particular safety, but that is incorporated into the FN. From a size perspective, it's got a Glock 19-ish style slide, so it's not a full service weapon type slide. It comes in at 7.4 inches front to back. It's 5.56 inches tall, so it's got a, you know, basically a Glock 17 height or a full service gun height grip. And it's 1.35 inches thick. So it's a little bit thicker than several of them, but it's not overly thick and it's not so thick that you couldn't conceal carry it if you want to. It's got a 4 inch barrel. 
and it comes with two 17 or 17 round magazines. And additional magazines are, are available. There are some compatibility capabilities between this and the FNS magazines. Any of FNS magazine that would work in the older guns that is bigger than this will work. But if it's the same size, the foot plates are a little, or base plates are a little bit different, and you may have some problems with them lining up. But if you had a larger magazine, it would mount and it would actually work. And the gun I almost failed to mention, it does have a Picatinny rail for putting on lights, lasers, and stuff like that. Takedown lever is here, it's relatively flush, and I'll show you when I take it apart, it's actually quite easy to operate. But let me get out this Glock 17 that I've got here for just a size comparison. I'm sorry, this is a 19. And it is unloaded. So from a size perspective, if I put them side by side, line the slides up, the slides are almost identical in length. And the Glock is just a hair thinner, but not significantly. From a height perspective, though, the Glock is much shorter. Now, the Glock only holds 15 rounds. The Glock 17 would be almost equal to the same size, and it would hold 17 rounds. So it's kind of got a compact length slide and a full-size length grip, which is kind of an interesting combination. This is a Glock video, so let me get rid of that. So the next thing I'll do, I'll, I'm going to show you how it comes apart. It's actually quite easy to disassemble, show you some of the internal components, and we'll go from there. To disassemble, it's fairly easy. You lock it back. Of course, it gives you an opportunity to verify that it's unloaded. Push the lever down. Now this is the next step. It's just a hair cumbersome. You have to release the slide and bring it to the point where it's basically in battery and pull the trigger. A lot of the guns where you lock them back and pull a lever, you don't have to pull the trigger. This one you do, and then it'll come right apart. Now set the, the slide apart for a moment, and we'll talk about the frame. It's got a very robust locking block, nice thick slide guides, so I expect to have really good longevity on it. And at the back, it's got very nice thick and wide and long rear guides. So from a durability perspective, this gun should hold up quite well. And as you can see, you've got the ambi slide release and the sear mechanism here at the back. And one thing that's kind of unique is the out of battery protection. That's this little arm right here. This little arm is actuated by this pin and that has to be slid over by a notch in the slide. I'll show you when I get the slide out to inhibit the operation of the trigger. That's how they do the out of battery protection. The rest of this is pretty standard for any striker gun that you've seen, you know, the overall frame. It's fairly, fairly clean, well manufactured, and nice and robust everywhere that you would need it to be. Let's go ahead and look at the slide. Okay, so we've got the slide. It does have a drop safety, like many of the other striker guns. It's got a nice long loading ramp has a dual captive recoil spring and we get out the barrel. I did mention it has a four inch barrel. Barrel is nicely machined. It's got a little bit of flare at the, at the front end for a better lockup. Has a nice polished and wide feed ramp. We have not had any ammo issues with this. We took it to the range and from round one till we were tired of shooting it, it just ran perfectly. So that, uh, you know, overall, this, the barrel and ramp and everything are well designed. And the rest of the slide. Nothing too special or fancy in here. You know, it's clean, it's well machined, but it's basically like any other striker gun. And while I've got it in my hand, too, I almost failed to mention, the rear slide has a shelf on it, turn sideways, you know, kind of a squared off shelf. So if you needed to use a belt or a boot or a table or something to pack the gun, you can, you know, the rear sight has that little shelf so that you can take care of that. Reassembly is pretty easy. Just drop the barrel in. I notice on this one, because of that flare, if you don't get it quite right when you're sliding it, it'll hang up a little bit and you just have to wiggle it a little bit. That's part of that, you know, that flare down to the barrel. So now I've got it reassembled. Now I'll go ahead and put it onto the frame. Reassembly is actually pretty easy. Make sure that's centered, of course. Just slide it back onto the frame, bring it all the way back and lock it back, release the lever, and you're good to go. So let me show you the trigger. It's actually got quite a nice trigger. So we'll cycle it. 
sure that we have, not only is it empty, but the trigger's ready. It's got the hinge trigger, like I mentioned, but that just disappears. You put your finger on it and just really, just laying your finger on it pretty much releases that. It's got a little bit of grit in the take up that you can hear and feel. But interestingly enough, when we were on the range, that just disappeared. We didn't notice it at all when we were actually shooting it. You know, sitting here in a quiet environment and just touching the trigger, I could pick it up, but it didn't affect shooting it at all. Once you're on the, t once you finish the take up, it's got a very crisp, short, nice break, and it's got a pretty good reset, which is right about there. And you're on the wall, and then you're right there, ready to break again. And if I were to let it all the way out, again, there's the reset, and then that's all the way out. So it's not the shortest reset out there, but it's actually quite nice, and it was really easy to get good follow-up shots with this. This is one gun that we had it out the range, and we stopped shooting it because we ran out of ammo. Not because we got tired of it, not because we'd done what we needed to do and it was time to go home. It was actually so much fun to shoot. We just kept on going until all the ammo that we brought with us in the bag was used up. And not a lot of guns get you that, where it's actually just so native and comfortable to hold that you want to just keep shooting it. So overall, we found it not only to be reliable, but a lot of fun to shoot and easy to shoot, easy to hold on to, and just overall a comfortable grip. From purchasing the gun, here's what it comes with. I've got the gun, of course, in my hand. I did mention that it comes with two magazines. I'm going to set the gun down for a second. Initially, it kind of comes in just a cardboard box, which you wouldn't expect from a high-end gun. But when you open the cardboard box, it's actually got, in, in addition to the lock and stickers and all the other assorted stuff that comes with it, it's got this soft case. And the soft case has a pouch for your spare magazine, and then you can set the gun in the case and zip it up. You know, a lot of guns do come with the hard case. The soft case actually might be kind of useful for taking it to the range, because it's a little more compact than the hard cases. And of course, if you've got a safe or something like that, then you're pretty much going to take it, you know, you're going to put it in the safe anyway. So the, you know, the case often gets set aside. So the other back strap, by the way, is in here. It was in that little pouch. So here's the other back strap. You can see there's a groove on the back that it slides onto the gun to guide it in place and hold it. And this is the smaller of the two back straps. It came with a larger back strap on it. So there's a place to put the back strap and your spare magazine. Now, one thing on the back strap is if we we're going to put the back strap on, it would sit. It's kind of hard to show it, but you can see it's much thinner. It's got a much flatter back strap, the, the smaller one, and it would sit, you know, basically line up on the gun. I'm trying to turn around the other way to see it. It's kind of hard to show this. There you go. Now you can kind of see I've got it lined up, and it's, you know, it's a little bit flatter. So you've got your choice of the two back straps. Set this stuff aside. In summary, it's an excellent gun. It was a, you know, a good submission into the MHS. The one thing this didn't have is the removable chassis that the P320 has. Don't know if that had any impact on you know, whether or not they won the contract. But it's a well done gun. It's real, right now it's very hard to find. I'm sure that'll change. We were able to get our hands on this one. And it's one of the first that I've seen out in the wild. I'm sure there'll be more of them. But if you're looking for a gun and you're wanting to have something you know, in the kind of the compact slide full-size grip, this would be a really good choice and I think you would enjoy it. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, check us out on Facebook, and have a great day. Thank you.